Hello again, Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs here in Reading, England. I'm Stuart Smith and on the bench today we have an Orange Crush Bass 50, which I've never had in the workshop before. Interesting little problem on this, I'll be fascinated to see what's wrong with it. Apparently it works low level and a little bit distorted and as you turn the volume up nothing very much happens until you get to about the last tenth of the volume then BAM it all comes in full volume. Now I would immediately think oh uh, the volume control has had a knock and it's actually broken but I've turned the volume control mechanically and it feels absolutely perfect so anyway let's just power it up and see if we can reproduce the customer's fault. Okay I've got the amp tilted forward here so that you can see the controls. It's behaving very oddly actually. When I first tried it a, m a moment ago I had no sound whatsoever. Um, but at the moment I've got the volume down and uh, you can hear that very low low level sound quite distorted too. Now watch what happens as I turn the volume up. Comes up and then comes up really full volume and now that's gone off completely now and that's the situation it was in when I first tried it so now oh no that was a little bit of signal there so low level all the way around here and then as soon as we get to the last absolutely kicks in on the last one percent of the volume well for my money that's got to be a volume control problem maybe it's had a, a bash on the top or something so anyway the next thing definitely to do is to um, take the chassis out by the way you'll notice I've got effect send and return bypassed via a little loop just in case it has anything to do with those sockets which it doesn't seem to be so right so let's take it apart by the way, as I mentioned, this volume control, the one that has the problem, is completely smooth. It doesn't feel in any way damaged. So we'll have a look inside in a moment. These Orange Crush amps all come apart the same way and it's quite easy. You have to take the handle off because the screws that hold the handle on hold the chassis in too. And then there are usually five small self-tapping wood screws kind of on the bottom here. Five, take those out and the chassis just should pull forward, can't do it with one hand. It's usually I find um, stuck along here with some tape or something, so quite often you have to press quite firmly down at this point here to break the tape seal and then the chassis will come forward. Anyway, I can't do it with one hand, so I'll take the chassis out and rejoin you then. Yes, that came out very easily indeed and all that remains is for us to remove the speaker connection here which goes on to this little two pin plug which they've put in a position which is completely unreachable for you to press the pins down. In other words, you can't really easily get that plug out. Great design. So I'm going to have to get in there with some very long nose pliers so I can press that catch down to pull this out. It makes you wonder who designs this stuff really. Again, they were happy to let that go um, in the design stage and say, yep, an unreachable plug, that's fine. Yep, sign that off. We're good to go. Right, that plug came off very easily with a pair of long nose pliers. Here is the culprit pot, this one here. It doesn't seem in any way to be deformed, bent, or to have suffered any trauma whatsoever. The back is still connected to the front. Doesn't look, look like it's had a bash on the shaft or anything like that. So we are going to have to take this board out completely. It's not the end of the world with these amps. You have to take off all the controls along the front and all the nuts, they'll come off. We have to take this board out here, but that's just two screws, one there and one there. And then um, I think I'll probably take this little sub board off too to save me trying to undo the glue on this connector here and take that earth tag off. That will allow us to take the board out and have a little look underneath here to see what's going on with this pot uh, and I'll be interested to see because it doesn't seem to have suffered any trauma okay we'll make a start on getting this furniture out of here 
handy little pot and then pull the knobs off sometimes these come off easily sometimes they don't these are easy and then we'll take some nuts off this probably won't do it no this device I bought only seems to do some quite rare nuts so I'm going to have to resort to my trusty adjustable spanner which I use without marking the front panel a lot of these are loose already I'm noticing these nuts They're, they are barely finger tight Undo those. Now this is the one that's causing the trouble. Just have a little feel of that. No, it's no worse than the treble control next to it. Hmm, bit of a mystery of this. I wonder if it is that pot. But we have no real alternative apart from to take this out and have a look what's going on there. So that's all the pots done. And now we need to also take out these input jacks and phone jacks like so there we go and the board is should be fairly loose um, ah I see okay I've never done one of these uh, 50 watt ones before I've done quite a lot of the 20 watt ones this heat sink is held on by a couple of screws here so I'm just going to find a screwdriver and we'll take take those out okay just undo those I think I might put those in a separate little pot go right so things are a little bit waggly now look but before we do anything else we'll take this board out and uh, we also need to take off the the front LED board let's do that first that's quite quite easy I've just repaired two orange crush 20s so the procedure is very similar to dismantle those. They all had broken pots actually. This comes from the same stable and it's used by students in a music school so you can imagine the abuse it gets. Okay that's that and um, as I say I think I'll take off this backboard just to make my life easy really. doesn't look original to me. Something's gone on there. I might see if I can find uh, another proper black washer for, the, for that one when I put it back together. So, there's only one more thing to do before we take the board out. Ah, come on. This last one doesn't want to come out, of course. There we go. So that's the board. So now we need to get this. I find these um, solder tags don't actually pull off. Sorry, solder tags. Well, yeah, solder tags don't pull off very easily. Let's just see. Oh, that did. Okay, good. That saves us undoing the nut. 
on there. So now this board should just come out nice and easy and we can take the mains input out as well. That's the AC coming in and now we've got the board out. That wasn't too dramatic actually. Now of course I've completely forgotten which pot it is. Is it this one or this one? I'm pretty sure it's this one. Have a look. The volume, yeah. So it was this one here is the problem one. Right, um, well, let's have a little look underneath. Yes, I knew that was going to be okay, and it is okay. It looks absolutely perfect underneath. I'll just get my eyeglass out on that. Yes, yeah, absolutely perfect. Let's get a meter on it. And see what it's doing resistance wise. I can't imagine why it would go weirdly resistant. Uh, what is it? It's a 25k linear. So I would hope to measure 25k roughly across it. End to end. Interesting. Open circuit. Aha! Uh -huh. oh. So we've got short circuit there, but that's because we've, we've turned it completely to the left. Open circuit across the across the track, so that should be 25k. So there's the problem immediately. This pot is faulty. Now if we, as we turn it a bit this way, let's see what happens. The, resist the resistance is coming up on here. Open circuit between here and here, of course. So this resistance should be coming down now as we rotate. Still open circuit. And of course, I bet you as we get to the very end, this will suddenly still open circuit. Bang. See that? Short circuit. So that's what's happening as soon as that gets to the end of its travel. Well, that pot's faulty. Right, well, don't know why. But there it is, so we will change that pot. Now, as it happens, I have exactly the right pot in stock because, as, as I say, I've just repaired some Orange Crush, crush 20s and the students have snapped off all the knobs, God knows how, and I've had to replace a load of these. So I'll go and find the right pot and then I'll show you how I change this fairly quickly. Right, as I su suspected in my stash, I have exactly the right pot there. Now, I could get the solder desoldering tool out on this and start to desolder it, but actually, there's a fairly kind of quick way that you can desolder pots. It's a little bit kind of quick and dirty, but anyway, just tin the iron and then I'm just going to go along these joints, and warm them up. whilst putting some lateral pressure on this way on the pot and that's now moved there. Now I'm going to go back to this one and put the pressure on the other way. There you go, see it's coming. Now I'm going to rock it back again like that. And we've pretty much got this now. There we go. It's fairly straightforward you see. Saves a lot of bother. But I do now actually want to clean up those holes and to do that I'm going to use some chem wick. This wicks up the solder. Absolutely excellent stuff. Don't buy any cheaper substitutes by chem wick. I don't get any money for this or any advertising or anything. Anything I recommend is because I use it. I don't get paid anything from anybody. Still, still in that hole, look. I don't know if you can see it wicking along the there. Now, now they're all free, look. Okay, so how to put a pot in. The difficulty is holding it. It's very easy to put in, look, you just put it in. But it, fl it flops around. So that one's actually staying quite nicely. So I'm just going to tack it in with one little bit of solder, like this. And now I can position the pot. It needs to go in a bit more, like that, and I want to make sure it's lined up with the others by looking along it, which it is. So now I can now 
solder these in properly like that and like that this joint is good but I'll just go over it anyway since I just tacked it in and there you go I think you'll agree fairly quick pot replacement there I think that's going to do the job now before I put that back in I often forget to do this which really annoys me and I want to clean this surface you've got all the controls out so why not whilst you're at it clean up the surface of the uh, of the amplifier to do that I'm going to use some foaming cleanser this is a Maplin one but Maplin have gone out of business so I now use Ambersol which is a uh, quite good I just spray it all over the, like that all over like that and then use a bit of tissue to clean it off it's absolutely filthy <laughs> this never gets done as you can imagine because nobody ever takes the chassis out there we go that's not perfect but it's a lot lot better than it was good so now we can pop the printer circuit board back in there like that so just a little bit of a joggle normally Oh, <laughs> right, of course, I've noticed I've left the, I'll show you what I've done now, I made a mistake, I've left the nut look on the, on this pot. So I'll take that off. Right, it's got a washer too, so we'll have that. Right, let's have another go at that. Shame we were doing well there. Sometimes they can be quite tricky to joggle in, and once you've got it, you think, aha, good. There we go. Now, great. What I normally do at this stage is just to uh, put on one of the, or both of the jack socket nuts there, and that holds it all in place. If it goes in like that, good. Just doing the finger tight at the moment. Now let's plug this back in whilst I think about it. So this is the AC coming in. Goes in there. Like that. Our earth connection goes back on. Now our little tuning board goes back in. I think it was that way around. Yep. So we want a couple of these little screws here that can go back in. You can't charge very much for repairs to these amplifiers because they're not worth very much. And I like to keep the prices down for companies like this is, I think it's the Reading Rock project. And, um, you know, they're not flush for cash and they teach youngsters how to, how to play. Now we can put this little stub board back in if it wants to go. I'll just put two of these in for the moment. Yes, that feels really, um, like it doesn't belong there. That's better, that one's okay. Let me just put these two outside ones in and we'll get the whole thing just that's okay. Good, so that's all back in. I'll I'm going to have a rootle through my box to see if I can find another one, another one of those kind of curved 
washers for that. I'll do that in a moment. Uh, so where are we? I think we're kind of good to go. We've got uh, the board back in. It's plugged in. That board's in. All the nuts are on. We haven't put the knobs on yet, but we. I suppose the next thing to do is to put these. I mean, you know, you could argue. Let's let's get it tested. Let's get it in. Let's make sure it all works. But you know what? I'm I'm quietly confident that uh, this will now just work perfectly. So I'm confident enough, ha ha ha, to go around putting it all back together. And if I have to waste another 10 minutes taking it all apart again, so be it. But that pot had such an obvious and definite fault. No idea why. I bet it's had a sharp bang at some point. And it's just not manifesting itself as a mechanical problem. You don't want to watch me put all these on, so I will rejoin you when I've got them all on. There you go, all our nuts are on. I will just do them up. Hardly any pressure when you do this, just enough to tighten them. That's it. Like that, and now we can put the knobs back on. To do that, I turn them all one way, in this case anti-clockwise. Then you can line up the the white spot with where it's supposed to go. So uh, this is our new one, by the way, so that went on quite well, that. One of the problems with replacing pots is there are so many different shaft types, lengths. Is it D on the end? Is it a knurled thing? Is it split like this or not? How long is the shaft? It can be quite a difficult job replacing a pot on an amp. Just getting, uh, what have I done there? Just getting the right one. And these can all go on. One, two, I'm not forgetting I've got that nut to do on the back. There we go. That's all done. Right, I'm just going to have a little rootle around to see if I can find a the proper washer for that. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find exactly the right one, but I've got a a black washer. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find exactly the right one, so I've got just a generic black washer here, which will have to do, I'm afraid. Better than the brown one, which, which screamed out a little bit. And, uh, there we go. It's almost certainly not used anyway, this, this affects send and return. So we're now ready to put that back into the chassis, into the case, and see if it works. So why don't I join you when I've done that? Okay, I've offered up the chassis and I haven't put all the screws in. I thought I won't tempt fate that much. So let's plug in the mains. Not sure I can do any of this one-handed. One thing I'm going to have a quick look at, actually, before I put the chassis in again, is this LED, this blue LED, I noticed it at the beginning, is not centred on this hole here, so I'll just take the chassis out and see if, see if I can move the LED. And we'll plug a guitar in. And turn the volume up a bit. Strum the guitar with my right foot. Okay, wouldn't say that was looking totally promising. Oh, there we go. There's a blend there. Not sure what that does. Maybe that blends the main signal in with the effect sender return or something? I'm not really sure. Anyway, a bit distorted. Oh, that's a full gain, full blend by the looks of it you've got to have. Don't know this amp at all, really treble and bass in the middle right volumes up full and that that works nicely so there you go bit of gain in and we'll probably get some drive yep. oh I'm gonna get so many messages about strumming the guitar with my foot I just know it 
It only cost me 50 quid, chaps, don't worry. And I've had it 10 years. Good, that's, we're good to go, look. That is now working perfectly. Now, before I put all this back together, I'm just gonna quickly line up that blue LED, and I'm gonna clean this top here whilst we've got the handle off. Um, it's a good, good opportunity to do it, so I'll join you in a little while. Okay, to clean this, I use uh, Meguiar's convertible top cleaner, which I've plugged before. Again, just to remind you, I don't get any remuneration of any description for recommending anything. So I just spray that on top and get a bit of kitchen towel or something similar. This will not come up perfectly, but it'll come up a lot better than it was. You can see how absolutely filthy it is. This sort of thing never gets done, either by an amplifier owner and in particular by a company. They just have a lot of time to be cleaning amplifiers. And it only takes five minutes to, for me to do it, so it's a good thing to do whilst I'm here. Again, you can see it's quite dirty. This falls under the category of a lot better. Perfect, we don't do. There we go. So that's now good. And we can now put the chassis back in properly with the um, handle screws. By the way, I did open it up and I was able to move this LED very easily. And uh, that now lines up with the hole. It wasn't lined up when I got the amp, so again, how on earth did that become misaligned? I'm just gonna put these back screws in because it lifts this front face up and allows me to get the handle screws in a little bit easier. So all in all I think that was actually quite a successful and relatively simple repair. There we go, that front panel's lifted up now quite nicely. And that will allow us to put the handle back in. Hopefully it will align with the Nuts underneath, let's see. No, of course not. Let's try this one. Okay, that one did, and that's lifted up this side now. And that's got that one in. Perfect. Uh, that's that now. We've got three more screws to put in the back. One. Two, three, and then we'll do a little final test just because things can go wrong when you put the chassis back in. Where's the other one there? Right. Great. Well, I'm happy with that. Even more amazing having the pot in stock. Okay, so a little bit of mains, a little bit of guitar. <laughs> Interesting, so making. <laughs> anyway, I'll show you what's happening in a moment, but meanwhile. Just test it. Might have to take the chassis out again. I'll tell you why. Right, so. Loads of volume. Volume works fine. Gain. Perfect. Okay, so that's, that's fixed. However, let me show you something. I'm going to take the camera off the tripod.
Okay, there's nothing whatsoever to do with what we've done on this amp, it's just one of those random things. Can you hear this kind of transformer-like buzzing? Now watch what happens when I flex the chassis. It goes completely. That's quite simply an, an, a mechanical buzzing coming from the mains transformer, which is under here, and just and just rattling something. Now we could see that stopped now, but but it'll come back. Uh, I'm just going to try tightening this screw a bit. The other thing we could do is just put a little shim of uh, of rubber underneath there or something, and that would probably do it. We'd loosen off this put a little shim of rubber and tighten that up again. So let's first of all see if tightening this gets rid of it. Can you hear it? I can. Right, tighten this. I wouldn't say that that is making a difference. If I can tune it a bit It's not her fault, this by the way, it's just a, literally a mechanical resonance. Yeah, I'm not happy. So I'm going to do what I said, I'm going to take these screws out. That'll allow this to go down a bit. I'll put a little bit of uh, something under there, not quite sure what yet. Tighten the screws back up and see if that, if that stops the problem. Okay, I've loosened off these screws completely. And now we can get some play in here, quite a lot of play in fact. I've cut some very thin strips of uh, rubbery sort of material. I keep a scrap box of anything that's useful material wise. It's amazing how handy it comes, it comes in. So I'm going to tuck this under here. I have no idea by the way whether this will work. Not the faintest idea. Is that worried? So let's see if tighten this up now. I can still hear it buzzing, but it might be okay once we've tightened this. Yep, it's actually done it. all these extra things that take the time when you're repairing an amp. You know, it didn't come in with a buzzing transformer. Having fixed it, it's going out with one. Okay, so um, I'm happy with that. I'm going to just run along there when I put the camera down and make that a little bit neater, but that's perfectly okay. No one's going to care about that. That buzzing has gone away, and we're good to go. Job done. I know how worried you are about these things, and I didn't want you to have any sleepless nights. So I just thought I'd show you that I did tuck that blue under there a little bit more just with the edge of a steel ruler so you can't even see that at all now. Goody goody! I thought you might like a little post-mortem on this because I was intrigued about why this pot was not working considering it seems mechanically sound. So I took it apart and had a good old look at it and the problem is between the contact here and see it goes up to that conductive part there before it then goes onto the carbon track so there's a break between the conductive part and the track so in other words I've got continuity from this pin to the conductive part and an open circuit from this pin to right on the track there where I can put a probe and you might be interested though, there's absolutely nothing visible there. I've had a high power eyeglass on it, there's no obvious crack or break or anything. But there, but there is a break between that and that, so that's why this pot was faulty. No idea why that's happened, maybe just one of those things. Well, there you go. That's what I call a bog standard repair. The sort of thing that I do for bread and butter. Nothing exciting, nothing glamorous, a cheap repair 
done in a sensible amount of time and no huge bills for the customers. I'd say 8 out of 10 repairs are of this sort of nature if you're thinking of taking this up as a paid hobby or even a profession. Okay, so there you go. Thanks as ever for watching. I'll keep them rolling as the amps keep rolling into the shop. Have a great day and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you again.